Before we can get started with the fun part, we'll need to set up our files correctly to avoid any hiccups as we move forward. In this lesson, I'll show you how to set up your files in both Photoshop and Procreate. It's pretty similar for both, but they each have their own unique features and settings that I will go over. Before we get into the specifics of each, we should go over some fundamentals. We're going to be animating frame by frame. And what that means is that all of the movement that will happen in our animations happens as a result of individual drawings transitioning from one to the next. The most basic example of this is a flipbook. Each individual drawing changes slightly, but when you flip through them quickly, it turns into a magical little video that tricks your eye. Each animation is made up of frames, and one frame equals one drawing. So you might be thinking, how many frames do I have to draw? That is a very good and a very important question. To answer that, we'll need to talk about frame rate. Frame rate is the amount of frames or drawings that happen within one second. Standard video is 24 frames per second. And again, you might be thinking, wait a second, every second I have to do 24 drawings? Not really. Lucky for us, animation is often done at 12 frames per second. And this is usually referred to as animating on twos, meaning that in a standard 24 frames per second video, each frame of the animation appears twice. In the applications we're going to be working in, Photoshop or Procreate, we can set this up as just a 12 frame per second document at the beginning and not have to worry about any of the complicated math. Okay, so let's get started setting up a file in Photoshop. So we'll go File New, and here we will choose our document size. So this will obviously largely depend on what you're planning to use your animation for, but for our purposes and the purposes of this class, I'm just going to use a square format, which is you know a good size for posting on social media, or maybe using as a thumbnail on your website, or anything you might use a square image for. So one thing to consider when choosing a size is that you want something that is not too big that it could be cumbersome and make your computer lag and have a huge file size. Because remember, our animation is going to be made up of individual drawings. So if you have a, a large file that has tons of different drawings, it could get pretty big. And as you're starting to try to preview it and play it back, it could become slow and laggy. So I find a good place to start is 2000 pixels. So 2000 pixels gives me a high enough resolution where I can export this large and it also allows for the best drawing experience. You'll find that if your file is too low resolution, you won't have enough pixels to get the brush detail that you're used to and not have the, the control over your drawing tools. So if you have an older computer or maybe you're lagging in hard drive space or memory, you could probably go down to uh, 1500 or 1000 pixels and still have enough room to play. Uh, I have a newer machine here with plenty of memory, so I like to use a bigger size because it gives me the most flexibility. So I'm going to go with 2000 pixels and hit create. And we're going to need our layers. So our layers are where our individual drawings will be. I'll get into this further later, but each drawing will have its own layer. And those layers we're going to need to send to a timeline. So we're going to open up our timeline. Under Windows, we'll go to Timeline. And the timeline window pops up, usually at the bottom. If it doesn't pop up there, the bottom is a good place to put it. I'm going to hit Create Video Timeline. And you'll see at the bottom it says 30 frames per second. We definitely want to change that because we don't want to be drawing 30 frames every second. So if you click on these lines over in the right corner, we can go set timeline frame rate. And here we can change it to 12 or animating on twos like we talked about. Okay, so we've got our layers, we've got our timeline. I like to open up my tool presets, which is where my different brushes are that I'll be drawing with. So click on tool presets. So we got our layers and our tool presets. And if you're fancy, 
and you're getting serious about wanting to do more animation stuff, there's an extension that I love to use called Animator's Toolbar Pro. So what this does is it makes buttons for a lot of features that you would have to do manually. So it really uh, makes things easier and I'll show you some of the benefits to this as we start animating. But I'll also show you how to do what you need to do without using Animator's Toolbar if you don't want to you don't have to go out and buy an extension just to learn animation. You certainly don't need to use this to start do, start animating. This just streamlines some of the process and it's something that I really like, so I thought I would share with you. So that's the basic setup for Photoshop. Let's go see how to set up a file on Procreate. Okay, so let's set up a file on Procreate. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up Procreate. I'm gonna to go to a, a new document. And as I mentioned, in the last one, I was going to go with around 2,000 pixels. Procreate has a standard setup with 2,048 by 2,048. So I'm going to just pick that one because I'm lazy and 2,000 was just an estimate. So this is pretty close. So I'm going to click on that. We've got our new document. We've got our, our layers over here, just like in Photoshop. And what we need to do to start animating in Procreate is to click on this little toolbar or tool icon on the top, top left, and then go to Canvas and then Animation Assist. And then we want to turn that on. So what that does is it opens up a little timeline at the bottom, similar to the timeline in Photoshop. Down here, we've got a little settings button and here you'll see frames per second. So remember we want that at 12. So we're just gonna drag this down to 12. So we've got 12 frames per second. And Procreate has a built-in onion skin feature. So what onion skin is, is that it turns down the opacity of the previous frame and shows it to you while you're drawing the second frame. That way you can see where the animation was and as you're making slow changes to trick the eye into making it look like movement, this will be very beneficial and helpful. If it's confusing to you now, don't worry about it. It'll make more sense as we start drawing and start animating. So we've got some settings for the onion skins here. We've got onion skin frames max. So what that means is that it's going to show us, you know, relative degrees of transparency, all of the frames. I think that's not helpful at all. I like to just have this set to, to one or two. And what that does, is it will just show you the frame from before your current frame and the frame after your current frame. And again, if this is confusing, don't worry, it'll make sense as we're going. And then you can control the onion skin opacity here. That's just how light or dark it shows up. And you can change this as you're going if it becomes annoying or distracting. This other setting I think is really cool, the color secondary frames. So this goes along with the onion skin thing and it makes in addition to making it transparent, it also makes it a different color. And this can be very helpful because when you're starting to transform things and it gets a little abstract, it can be confusing which layer is which. So when you have the previous layer in a, a different color, it becomes much more clear. So I like to turn that on. And then below that, we've just got some options for previewing. We've got the one shot, one shot which just means that when you play the animation, it starts at the beginning and stops at the end. Loop uh, will just continue in a cycle. When it gets to the end, it'll go back to the beginning. And ping pong, it'll play to the end and then bounce back and play in reverse. So we can play around with those as we get started. But this is all you need to do to get a file set up to start animating. In the next lesson, we will choose and make the subjects for our animations. That sounds like fun, right? All right, I'll see you there.